Hello my darlings and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Miranda and I am the Enchantress of Avalon. And as I'm sure you can see by the title of today's video, we are discussing one of the most iconic of all Halloween folk tales, given that Halloween is just a few days away from when this video is posted. So I'm very excited. I've never actually discussed this folk tale in it really in depth on my channel, so I hope you all enjoy. And uh, the folktale is, of course, the origins of the jack-o'-lantern. But before we get into the folktale, I do want to just give my cursory reminders that I give every video that I do own, an, own my own small business. It is an online shop, White Rose of Avalon. It's always linked in the description box below. And I have herbal teas and tarot services on offer over there. So if you fancy a nice cozy cup of herbal tea or are interested in a tarot reading to gain a little more insight on your situation, you can go ahead and click that link and browse my shop. I also do have a Patreon if you want more content similar to what I post here and on my blog. I give more in depth, there's more blog posts, there's more videos, and there's even meditations. It is just a very fun fairy time over there. It is Avalonine Rose Fairy Mysteries Patreon and it is also linked in the description box below. As is my Discord server if you're just looking for a fun time that it's completely free you can get just communicate with all of us over there it is always a delight to have new people join and join in the discussions now on to the topic of the video so the story of how the jack-o'-lantern came to be comes to us from folklore found primarily in ireland although they're are variations throughout Celtic lands, but it's the basic one comes from Ireland. And it is the story of a man who is named Jack, as we would assume given he inspired the jack-o'-lantern. And he is not a very nice man. He is a hard drinker. He's in a lot of debt. He's not kind to people. So in general, he's not a very good person. And that does play into the story greatly. Because you see, since Jack isn't a very good person, one day the devil comes to pay him a visit. There are versions of this tale, I will note, that He's first visited by an angel who tries to get him to change his ways. And then he you know, does something terrible to the angel and then the devil pays him a visit later. I'm just going with a little bit more basic telling. So he gets a visit from the devil and the devil obviously wants to collect his soul because he's such an evil soul he'd be perfect to be one of his one of the devil's minions correct jack doesn't want this obviously he's not ready to stop being on the earthly plane and he's like okay sure i will go ahead and come with you but could i have one final drink and the devil agrees okay yeah let's go to a bar so Jack and the devil go to this bar and they're sitting there drinking and it's having a good time. Then it's getting a bit late and the devil wants Jack to come with him at that point. And Jack's like, well, I would, but you see, I don't have any money to pay. The devil kind of is getting a little annoyed at that point, but is like, okay, fine. What are we supposed to do? Do you want to pay even? Because... Jack's not really the kind of guy that would care much about paying, but he did want to pay. It was his final drink at a bar, so he said. And some tellings I've read have said that the devil gets this idea and other tellings say Jack convinces the devil, but either way, the devil transfigures himself into a golden coin. 
to use as payment. And then, of course, he could just transfigure himself back and be on his merry way after Jack leaves the bar. But instead, the devil transfigures himself into a golden coin and Jack puts that golden coin in his pocket. He doesn't use it to pay. He does leave without paying, which again, he's not a very nice person. Dining and dashing is the least of his offenses. And he leaves and he has that gold coin. That's the devil transfigured in his pocket. But here's the thing. He takes a crucifix he had on him and puts that in his pocket as well. That religious item being placed in his pocket prevents the devil from being able to work his magic to transfigure back into his regular form. So yeah, Jack has tricked the devil and he convinces the devil to make a bargain. Hey, you won't collect my soul tonight. You'll give me extra time on the earthly plane or else I'm not going to let you transfigure back. I'm going to keep you with that crucifix. The devil agrees. And then sometime later, again, this varies. It's a folktale. varies from telling to telling. Sometimes it's a year. Sometimes it's 10 years. It's an indeterminate amount of time. Whatever time frame Jack had bargained for, the devil comes back to him one night. And at that point, Jack manages to, tap, to trap the devil in a tree. Again, it's very variable how he does this. There's usually religious items yet again, and he will only let the devil down if he agrees to never collect his soul. That's the important part at the end of the day is that Jack has convinced the devil to never collect his soul. Okay, well and good. The devil agrees, Jack lets him go, and Jack goes on his merry way living out his life in degenerate, in degeneracy for the rest of his time. But he's hard living and he's not immortal, he's a human. So one day Jack does die. And when Jack dies, he goes up to the pearly gates of heaven and tries to get in. And they're like, are you kidding me? After everything you've done, you think you can get into heaven. You never did anything good for anyone else. You can't come in here. So then he goes down to hell and he asks the devil to let him in. And the devil said, hey, you made me promise never to collect your soul. So I'm never collecting it. I don't. I don't squelch on a promise. I won't go back on that deal that we made. And Jack's like, well, where am I supposed to go? And he said, and the devil's like, oh, well, you'll just have to wander around in the dark abyss between the realms for all time. But I'll do you one good favor. I will give you this lantern made out of a turnip. I'll get into that in a second. And I will give you this flame. The flame will never burn out put it in the turnip. In some versions, it's Jack that just gets the turnip later because he doesn't want to burn his hands. But in some versions, the devil does give it to him. In any case, this flame is often described to be kind of like the will of the wisp, which given how Christianized this tale is with the devil and heaven and hell at play, you would think, oh, why is a fairy here? Because the will of the wisps are a fairy entity. But the thing is, the will of the wisps are fairy from Scotland and Ireland. And especially in Ireland, Christianity and Catholicism and the fairy faith were intermingled. So I do like to say that that eternal flame given to him was actually a will of the wisp that was placed inside this turnip. And Jack wandered and continues to wander between the realms, not welcome in the good place or the bad place for all time. And it's said that sometimes he'd be seen on Halloween nights and 
he's carrying this turnip light. It's the only bit of light about him. And it has a face carved in it. Now, I did say I would get to why is it a turnip? It's because jack-o'-lanterns as we know them made out of pumpkins didn't come into being until the Irish started really immigrating en masse to America because carving jack-o'-lanterns out of, out of turnips was common and it's still done sometimes in the old Celtic lands, but turnips are a root vegetable. They are very difficult to carve out. They are carved to protect you from the spirits that are all over on Halloween night because the veil is very thin right now. But when the Irish immigrants came over and saw pumpkins, which are much bigger than turnips and they're much softer and much easier to carve, they began carving jack-o'-lanterns out of pumpkins which is why we so associate pumpkins with jack-o'-lanterns. But the original ones are out of turnips. And if you look at pictures of them, they're actually really creepy, like way creepier than most pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns you could ever see. And you could understand why spirits might want to stay away if you have one of those outside your house. But no matter what version, it all does originate with that story of Stingy Jack, as he is known, other than Jack of the Lantern, which he becomes known for the fact that he carries this turnip lantern with him as his only form of light. He's also originally known as Stingy Jack because of how horrible he was in his life. Everything goes back to that folk tale. I do hope you've enjoyed this slightly rambling retelling of the story of the jack-o'-lantern. And I will also, since this video is pretty short, I will cut in some footage of me carving my own jack-o'-lantern that I will record in a couple days when I carve my jack-o'-lantern and you will have this complete video about the jack-o'-lantern. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, please do like, comment, subscribe, and check out my links in the description box below. Bye now. <laughs> Okay, so as you just heard the story of the jack-o'-lantern, I'm going to show you some footage of me creating my jack-o'-lantern. My pumpkin lid is off <laughs> and we're just going to dig in and start getting out the seeds because we want to roast those later, right? And then I will pop back in and show you what this pumpkin actually looks like. <laughs> okay, so this is the reveal of what my pumpkin looks like for this year. I went really very traditional jack-o'-lantern because I haven't done a traditional jack-o'-lantern in the longest time. I usually go really fancy. So I hope you have enjoyed this little look at